how to navigate India's transport systems. Travelling in India can be the most exhausting, exhilarating and crazy part of your journey there, so we've created these tips. Indians drive on the left side of the road. That means you've got to look to the right first because that's where the cars are coming from. Although you may often see people driving on the wrong side, so basically you've got to look both directions. It can be really wild. Ride a train at least once in your trip. I recommend only traveling on 2AC or first class and book your tickets well in advance or they'll be sold out. Trains are the best way to travel long distances if you're on a budget. They cost next to nothing. Avoid the food that they provide on the train, except if it's been packaged properly. Air travel in India is by far the most luxurious way to travel. If you can afford it, it's the fastest way to get around and obviously you can travel very long distances. And it's very much similar to any air travel you do anywhere in the world. Buses can be a good choice if the journey isn't too long. They're super cheap, but they don't have air conditioning, so they're gonna be hot. And if the ride is more than a few hours, I recommend getting on a train instead because it's so much more comfortable. Traveling via an air-conditioned taxi is great for short journeys if you can afford it. The car provides comfort by eliminating the noise with the windows up and the AC keeps you cool. The zigzagging can get a bit too much if the trip is more than a couple of hours. If you value your life, I absolutely recommend you demand a working seatbelt before you get in the car. Be persistent and they will make sure it works. Otherwise, get a different taxi. Auto rickshaw journeys are memorable to say the least. The autos, as they're called, are great for really short rides, you know, like a few miles. But I recommend you have earplugs, sunglasses, and a bandana to avoid too much bombardment on the sensors. Also, it's best not to go for a long journey or you'll just be utterly exhausted. And frankly, it's pretty dangerous. Those rickshaws are very small. They don't have seat belts. If you were hit by a truck, it would be all over. So I only use them for super short journeys. I recommend avoiding long journeys by the road, period, because the Indian roads are so wild. They're so bumpy, you got a zigzag, you're getting trucks that are about to hit you, and then the driver swerves at the last second. It can be really tiring, and if there is an option, always get a train or a plane or a bus instead. Otherwise, you might get car sick or just get really tired. Be careful while walking on the busy Indian streets. Scammers and thieves can lurk on the streets around train stations and big tourist areas like the Taj Mahal. Our advice is always take caution when approached by anyone on the street. Usually it's a nice person who means no harm, but simply exercise caution in case they are more sinister. Sometimes there may never be a gap in the traffic when you're crossing the road. In this situation, you may have to weave through the traffic. If you attempt to do this, first watch how the locals do it and learn how to pace yourself so you can do it safely. Make sure you have enclosed footwear when walking on the street in India because there can be all kinds of dangerous objects that may cause you to stub your toe or get a minor cut. No matter what, have your wits about you when walking on the street in India. Be prepared for super loud horns, honking, and bad exhaust fumes that are at times asphyxiating.